Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. We don't need anyone to tell us the truth. We know the truth. What we need is for faithful Catholics to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. That's not the truth. All of that is the advice from Bishop Rene Gracida, retired from the Diocese of Corpus Christi, Texas, who has been an eyewitness to the demolition of the faith during his 92 years of life. His Excellency insists that we have more than enough people in the church, he singles out Cardinal Raymond Burke, for example, telling us what the truth is. But the missing ingredient is lay people, lay people standing up and calling out leaders who are teaching wrong-headed notions. Last Christmas, Bishop Gracita sat down with our church militant crew and spoke on camera for almost three hours about the challenges facing the faithful, potential solutions to the current catastrophe, and reflected in depth on how we arrived at this point. All this week, the Vortex will be bringing you portions of that interview, the complete version of which can be seen by signing up for a 15-day free trial to become a premium member. We invite you to take the time to listen to His Excellency and carefully consider what he is saying. Rarely does a bishop speak as publicly and directly as this. God love you. Do you think there needs to be more effort on the part of faithful Catholics, mostly laity, uh, to keep pointing out, this isn't Catholic, this is going wrong, the education isn't there, there's too many problems in seminary, whatever, whatever all of the issues are? Well, I'll put it, I'll put it negatively. If they don't do it, the church is doomed. I've said over and over and over again that one of the greatest gifts that John Henry Cardinal Newman gave to my education was when he wrote in the historical tracts about the Arian controversy in the fourth century. And Cardinal Newman said that there was a moment in the fourth century when the majority of bishops were either Arian or semi-Arian, and if it wasn't for the Pope and Athanasius, the church would have been ruined. But the Pope and Athanasius enabled at the Council of Nicaea to clearly define the nature of Christ as divine, and that saved the church from total heresy. So it was the census, he said, he wrote that the, the laity would not hear of the heresy. And in the churches, when an Arian priest or bishop would preach that Jesus Christ was not divine, they would rise up and walk out of the church or they would shout and create a disturbance in the church. They would shout, shout down the homilist. No, no, it's not true. It's not true. You're wrong. You're wrong. So it was the census fidelium expressed verbally out loud by the faithful in the fourth century that enabled the Pope and Athanasius to save the church from the majority of bishops, majority of bishops. That's what Newman says. Newman says the majority of bishops were either Arian heretics or semi-Arian heretics. That's mind-boggling. Sure. To think that the majority of the shepherds of the church would be heretics or semi or heretics that's a, uh, in a semi heresy is mind boggling, but that's where we are now. I don't know if it's the majority, but uh, too many bishops have bought into like the heresy of the Casper heresy. What is the Casper heresy? The Casper heresy is that the essential attribute of God is mercy. Yeah. Now it's absurd, it is heretical to say that. The essential attribute of God is love. It is love that, com that causes the three persons to be God, Father, Son, and Spirit, not mercy. It is impossible for the Father to have mercy on the Son, or the Son to have mercy on the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit have mercy on the Father and the Son, because mercy implies sin, guilt. So, 
we are in a crisis now of this mercy, year of mercy. We are in a crisis that is comparable to the Arian heresy, which denied the divinity of Christ. For the Casperites to say that the essential, essential attribute of God is mercy, not love, is an out and out heresy. Yeah, St. John says God is love, not God is mercy. St. John says it very plainly. God is love. doesn't say God is mercy. You got me worked up. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I've already burnt my bridges. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is wonderful, Your Excellency, that, that people can hear all of this. I mean, just that one, I mean, I, I haven't heard it expressed that way. I mean, that's it. I mean, obviously, as soon as I hear it, I'm like, oh, duh, of course that's true. But it's important that it's important that somebody wearing a chain with a zucchetta says this is the truth. So people can well, it's, hear this. It's even more important than, than people, than someone saying this is the truth. We have people saying that. Cardinal Burke, for example. Mm -hmm. We have people in Cardinal uh, uh, Hell. You know, they're, they're saying the truth. They're, What's more important at the present moment in the context of what we were just talking about mm -hmm. is for people in the pew to say, no, that's not true. It's more important for people in the pew to rise up and say in print, in letters, in phone calls, in email, in, in person, on, 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 in interviews, it's more important for the laity to say, no, that is not true than it is for someone like a Burke or a Bell to say this is the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth, we know what the truth is. It is in the magisterial teachings of Benedict and Paul the, Paul, John Paul II and the preceding popes. Leo XIII, Pius, the, Pius X. These popes have spoken the truth. We know the truth. We don't need to hear someone tell us the truth. What we need to hear more and more of at the present time in the church, if we're later to say, no, that's not true. That's not true. Just like in the fourth century, when those people stood up in the, in the church in Egypt and shouted down Arias and said, no, you're wrong. He is divine. He is divine. When Anthony from the desert could come in and, and shout down Arias and say, I have seen him. <laughs> you know, in an apparition, when Jesus appeared to him in the desert, with his hands and wounds and so forth. When Jesus appeared to that Saint Anthony in the desert, he revealed himself as being divine, sure. okay? So Anthony could shout out in church in, 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 in Alexandria or Cairo, no, you're wrong, I have seen him. He is God. That's what That's we what have we to do. today. Do you want to stand up in their churches and say to the priest, homilist or to the bishop homilist, no, you're wrong. You cannot give Holy Communion to the to abortionists or to abortion promoting legislators or to divorce and remarry. You cannot do it. St. Paul says you do not feed the, the Eucharist to dogs. Okay, you got me worked up again. <laughs> Are there enough laity who understand this? To stand up and we say have to this, help them. That's what that's what Church Militant is doing. You helping? You need you need to help people through the Church Militant to stand up in their pew in their churches and to shout, "Father, you're wrong. That's not true." If enough people do that at Mass, when a priest says something from the pulpit like gay marriage is okay, it's okay for two men to enter into marriage. Someone needs to stand up in the pew and say, no, you're wrong. Believe me, that'll cause an uproar. The ushers will probably come and get them and usher them out, okay? But it's still the, the effect has been done. The priest will know better the next time to say from the pulpit that two men can en enter into marriage. He'll be apprehensive, he'll be afraid that someone else will stand up and say, no, you're wrong. What is the single most important thing now? He may have just answered the question, but what is the single most important thing now on a natural level that faithful laity can do?
can just, engage I in. I just told you. Challenge. Resist? They need, they Do need they need to, to resist? They, right now, they are, they're suffering in silence. But they need to object. The laity, the census fidelium is that common sense, sense among the laity who have accepted the magisterial teaching of the church, which is the, is the foundation of their faith. Having accepted that, when they hear something which is contradictory to the magisterial teaching of the church, the census fidelium is an impulse which causes them to speak out and say, no, that is not true. Don't say that. You can't say that. Stop. That's the census fidelium in action. Mm -hmm. Not to sit and suffer in silence. Gee, that's crazy. That's weird. That's, that's, that's wrong. Speak up. Speak up. Resist. Okay. Object. Object. <laughs> Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Their experienced team of professional agents is ready to help you in every step of your journey, whether you are buying, selling, or both, and anywhere in the world. On top of that, what makes Real Estate for Life so great is that with every property bought or sold through one of their agents, an average of $1,000 and sometimes much more is donated to support the culture of life get a top-notch real estate agent, and support pro-life causes at the same time. Don't wait any longer. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more.